good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. These are the opening words of our psalm for today, Psalm 133. Living together might mean something different to you now than it did oh, just last year. Nonetheless, it is good and pleasant to be gathered together in God's word. And we know that God's Holy Spirit works to connect us even when we're apart from one another. Today in our worship, we continue in the story of Joseph from Genesis, and we will explore the ways God works through our lives to bring meaning and purpose in some surprising ways. Friends, let us worship God. Please join us in the call to worship. God has forgiven us and drawn us close, reconciling us through Jesus Christ, who has lavished upon us the fullness of the blessed Holy Spirit. With glad and grateful hearts, let us praise the Lord. Please join us in the opening prayer. Lord Jesus, Son of God, your blessings know no boundaries that faith cannot cross. Strengthen us to trust your mercy, reach out for your healing, and receive your reconciliation. Amen. confess our sins without fear to the one who yearns to embrace us, forgive us, protect us, and bless us. Have mercy on us, Lord Jesus. We are tormented. Our lives have been disrupted by the devil and by our own devilish desires and evil exploits. We are dismayed at your presence, anguished by the awful fallout of our own failures. We cannot take back what we have said or undo what we have done or atone for the agony we have caused. We are haunted by the past, plagued by the present, and fearful of the future. We shrink away from your gaze as strangers outside your circle of blessing. Yet the faith you have planted in us reaches out for your favor, returns to your presence, and hungers for your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our God kisses us with kindness, forgiving our sins, preserving our lives, and restoring our souls through the abundant provision of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are forgiven and healed in the name of Jesus the Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. One, two, three, go. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. This past week, our friend Frank got together with his family and all of his toys to learn about the story of Joseph. You remember Joseph had that fancy multicolored coat that his father gave him? Well, Joseph also had a lot of brothers, 11 older brothers. And sometimes they liked Joseph, and sometimes they didn't like Joseph. Well, one day when they were not liking Joseph very much, they decided together to do a bad thing, and they had Joseph sent away, far, far away. And for a long time, Joseph was separated from his family. Well, the story in the Bible that we hear today is about how many years later they were reunited in the land of Egypt. Joseph saw his brothers, and he was so surprised to see them. And then when they saw Joseph, they were just as surprised that it was really him. They were so sorry for what they had done to him years before. And Joseph had decided that he wanted to forgive them because he loved them and his father. You know, sometimes this is what we need to do too. We need to ask for forgiveness and forgive one another because we love each other. This is what God does for us because God loves us God forgives us for anything we do wrong, and God asks us to forgive one another too, and to love each other in the same way that God loves us. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Will you please join me in prayer? Merciful Savior, your suffering has saved our lives, secured our future, and restored us to relationship with God. Remove the shame and fear that cause us to cower in your presence. By the power of your Spirit, open our eyes and heart to your word of love, mercy, healing, and blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Genesis 45, verses 1 through 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go to my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, 
and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some years ago when I was a campus minister, I knew a student named Megan, a very dear young woman. Megan had this ability, this wonderful ability to find the silver lining in everything. She could find something hopeful in every disappointment of her life. And I loved what she would always say. She would come to me and say, in a way, I'm glad this happened. And then she would tell me how she had found some new opportunity in this particular setback. Megan had a real talent for reframing her disappointments. Of course, these were all relatively minor disappointments at that time, and I don't know how Megan would have handled a real crisis, the kind of thing that Joseph was thrown into again and again and again. So much has happened to Joseph since last week when he was trotted off to Egypt with the Ishmaelite caravan. You may recall that there he was sold to Potiphar, an official in the Pharaoh's court. And Joseph rose very quickly in Potiphar's household. Pretty soon he was put in charge of everything. But then Mrs. Potiphar came along and, well, as the book says, she cast her eye on Joseph. When Potiphar found out, he had Joseph thrown in jail where he languished for years. But during that time, Joseph's gift for interpreting dreams was recognized and put to use. Other prisoners would seek him out to help them understand their circumstances better by the interpretation of their dreams. It was here that Joseph interpreted dreams for the Pharaoh's chief cupbearer. And years later, when the chief cupbearer was back in his position serving the Pharaoh, he remembered the man from prison who had interpreted dreams. That's how Joseph finally came to Pharaoh's court. It was a long road filled with suffering for Joseph. And it's important for us to remember that, to imagine how it felt for him on this day the day when Joseph sees his 11 brothers in the palace of the Pharaoh, the 11 brothers who had him thrown into a pit and then pulled him out just to sell him into slavery, the 11 brothers who had then gone home and lied to their father, telling him that Joseph was dead, the 11 brothers who for all of these years when Joseph has been exiled, enslaved, imprisoned, had been at home in the comfort of their family, surrounded by their loved ones. Just imagine how Joseph felt to see these 11 brothers now, the brothers who treated him with such cruelty. Now, all of them bowing down to the ground before him how would you have felt? I should add that this scene when Joseph reveals his identity to his brothers, this is not the first time that he has seen them. That's important for us to remember. And the fact that they don't recognize him, that's important too. Because these things together 
give Joseph some time and some space to figure out just how he feels about this. And what Joseph figures out is how the hand of God has moved through all of this. Joseph sees God in everything that he has been through. He sees how every single thing that has happened to him has led to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and finally taken him here in the same room with his brothers and in a position to save his whole family from the famine. Joseph sees the hand of God in all of it. He sees design instead of malice. Joseph sees purpose and meaning. And because he can see all this, Joseph can forgive his brothers for their deeds. He's able to let go of it and to experience gratitude instead of resentment. Hmm. What is it like to be able to exchange resentment for gratitude. I can think of conversations I've had with people who carry their bitterness around with them for years. They cannot forget and they refuse to forgive for how they've been hurt. And I can recall conversations with people who have carried around resentment for the losses they have experienced in their lives never forgetting them and never letting them go. But on the other hand, I can also remember a story that was shared with me by my friend Jean, who has a son with schizophrenia, detected in young adulthood like it usually is. At a certain point, the family decided that the best thing would be for her son to move out of Jean's home. And so she began inquiring about getting him into a group home, but discovered that there was a years long waiting list. So instead, Jean helped her son get an apartment and she tried to make it work. She worked hard to make it work. Jean would drive over every single morning to him to bring him coffee and cigarettes. And when I asked her why she couldn't just do this every few days or once a week, she said that if she gave him a week's worth of cigarettes, he would smoke them in a day. She tried so hard to make this work, but her son was an easy target for anybody who wanted to take advantage of him. And pretty soon that happened. He was befriended by some people who wanted a place where they could make their drug deals. And they began using his apartment for just that. When the police showed up and they arrested the drug dealers, Jean's son was evicted. At this point, Jean was in a real crisis. She made a phone call to find out where they were on the waiting list for placement in a group home, just hoping desperately that the list was moving faster than expected. She explained the situation over the phone and to her surprise, she was told that now everything was different. Since her son was evicted from his home, he was considered homeless, and that fact put him at the top of the list. Jean's son was placed in a group home within a week. Jean told me this story as a way of saying that this is how God works sometimes. If her son had not been abused by these drug dealers, and if the police had not come in, and if he had not been evicted from his apartment, he would not have been moved to the top of the list and he would not have found the home that was just the right home for him. Sometimes a terrible thing opens the way for a good thing to happen. Not that we should ever minimize the terrible thing, no, but perhaps we can see it as a part of a process, part of a greater whole. And the truth is, you are the only one who can do that for yourself. Joseph was only able to forgive his brothers because he was able to see that every single one of us has our part to play in God's great design. And I would even say that probably every one of us takes our turn playing the villain in some way. There is an incredible gift for Joseph 
when he declares that God has given his life purpose and meaning. It is the gift of grace, the gift of gratitude, forgiveness. How can you receive this same gift? Friends, may you look back on the hardships and losses of your life and, and ask if there is a way that God was present in it. May you reflect on present hardships and losses and ask God to show you the blessings in it. May you look beyond the hardships and the losses and, and trust that God will work through it, bring you through it, and carry you into the presence of Jesus. All thanks and glory and honor and love be to God. Amen. Let us join together our hearts in prayer as we pray for the needs of the world, saying, Lord, help us. We trust in you. Let us pray. God of mercy and healing, you are Lord of all, embracing the estranged, blessing the banished, reconciling the rejected. We cry out to you now confident that your provision is abundantly more than enough to preserve the church, to redeem the world, and to deliver the tormented. Lord, help us. We trust in you. For your people, the house of Israel, and the household of faith near and far, Lord, help us. We trust in you. For the church, that we may work your reconciliation with your mercy and healing for all. Lord, help us. 
we trust in you. Bring reconciliation and new beginnings where it is deeply needed, in families, between races and cultures, political parties, nations, and all peoples. Lord, help us. We trust in you. Bring healing for those who are tormented, those who are rejected, marginalized, for those who are fearful, forgotten, cast off. Lord, help us. We trust in you. For those whose names we lift now in your presence. Lord, help us. We trust in you. Almighty God, we stand in your circle of favor, embraced by you, healed by you, blessed by you, remembered by you, and secured by you. We are grateful for your loving care. In Christ's name we pray, and saying the words that he taught his disciples, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give as God has so abundantly given to us. Almighty God, receive the fruits of our labor and the dedication of our lives. Make them an acceptable sacrifice in union with Jesus Christ. Amen.
Friends, God has gifted you with forgiveness and graced you with reconciliation. Go now and share these gifts with the world that needs them. The God who forgives, reconciles, heals, and blesses is with you today and forever. Amen.